I mean, but um, after we were seeing each other, I think within the space of about a couple of weeks, she started asking me for money. And I didn't even, um, I was like, listen, I ain't that type of guy, I ain't no books, like, um, <laughs> whatever. And then she started, um, I think she actually jumped online and showed me um, her profiles on like adultwork.com and Craigslist. And she actually had um, actual profiles with price lists and stuff. And she said, when she said promiscuous woman, she's actually um, an escort, she was actually an escort. <laughs> What's going on, people? And welcome back to the Baby Fathers podcast for another brand new episode. I'm your host, and I go by the name of DJ Riddler. Now, listen up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, make sure to subscribe to the channel now. And don't forget to press that notification button so anytime a new episode comes out, you're not going to be the first to know. All right? So we are in Studio 2 today. Studio 1 is down. So this is the reason why we're in Studio 2 filming, because the show must go on. All right? So cool. So listen up. I have a new special guest. He goes by name or Spy Phoenix. How you doing, my bro? Hey, what's going on? What's going on? Listen, I'm going to say thank you for coming down today on the Baby Father's platform. I appreciate it. I appreciate having me here, to be honest. Yeah, <laughs> wicked. So what has brought you down to the Baby Father's today? Um, Well, to be honest, I think it's it gets to a point where we we need to show exactly what's going on in the system. I mean, a lot of a lot of us men, especially black black fathers, I mean I can't speak from my own perception, but a lot of black fathers we get a bad a bad rep and there's a lot of fathers who really want to take an active role in their children's lives but are being hindered in so many ways. So me myself, I have I have two children, but literally on one side, if you look at my social medias, it looks like I'm an amazing father. I get commended all all sorts. But then I actually have a son that whom no one really knows about and you occasionally see him but um, according to his baby, according to my baby mother, I would be the worst baby father and the typical thing. So I think it's good to actually get out on the platform and show literally the two sides of things and how things can actually happen and how we're being hindered. And hopefully we can make some changes somewhere, somehow. All right, wicked. So listen, before we start today's show, I have to put a disclaimer out there. All right, so anything what you say is your truth, it's your truth only. No one can't say anything different because it's coming from you, how you understand it to be. Yeah. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to start from the beginning all right, so you you said that you've got two kids. Yeah. All right. What is the age group difference between the both of them? Um, my son is eight and my daughter is seven. So All I'm right. literally just a year. Um, and it's weird because my son's 29th of May, daughter's 29th of July, and I'm 29th of December. So okay. all 29s. Okay. <laughs> oh, no, there you go then, isn't it? Lucky number. Yeah. All right, cool. And the kids' mothers, is it for the same mother or two different mothers? No, two separate mothers. All right, so just to, just to clear that up, all yeah. right. So we're going to start with the oldest son's mother first. Yeah. How did you lot first meet? Um, we first met online. Um, I think it was on, was it on something like Profile Pick or MySpace or something? Um, met online um, initially she said she doesn't actually date black guys because they can't really handle a promiscuous woman. Um at the time, I didn't even understand what the word promiscuous woman actually meant. I thought it meant, like, freaky. Mm. And I'm a bit of a freak, so I was like, yeah, of course, man. And man blowing it up and everything. And, boy, my game's tight, so she... So man started linking her. Yeah. Um, when she started coming down, um, um, and, yeah, she eventually told me what promiscuous woman meant, but we'll get into that in a bit. All right, cool. So how long was this relationship going did you became boyfriend and girlfriends or were you more just kind of just seeing each other? We were, we were seeing each other like for about, probably about three, four months at the max. All right. So you were just linking, just at yeah, the linking just stage? Literally, yeah, literally linking stage. For when you were just linking, how was that, that four months? Well, to be honest, because as, as I said, she said she was a promiscuous woman. I didn't actually know what that meant. But um, after we were seeing each other, I think within the space of about a couple of weeks, she started asking me for money. And I didn't even, um, I was like, listen, I ain't that type of guy. I ain't no books, like, um, <laughs> whatever. And then she started, um, I think she actually jumped online and showed me um, her profiles on like adultwork.com and Craigslist. And she actually had um, actual profiles with price lists and stuff. And she said, when she said promiscuous woman, she's actually um, an es she was actually an escort. And she stopped escorting since she, since she got with me. And um, basically that's why she keeps asking me for money because her money's run dry. Um, so in that period, um, how now most of this, the, the free form ups have seen her was I more tried to understand how, um, a young, pretty black girl 
from like um and her parents i think she's Ghanaian. um how she could be involved in that type of lifestyle and um i think i'm a bit of an empath so it's like without realizing you try to help a person through certain things and try to understand that and i also felt touched that she said she actually stopped doing what she's doing to to see man because that meant that there was some sort of affection and you don't judge anyone by their past so did you not ever see any signs that she was a working girl not at first like i mean when we like i said when we, we started chatting online mm. and when you chat online you're just getting to know a person and you're just having them conversations and when you're young as man you're just trying to ask her to come down yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's just kind of all that and she, we were just getting to know each other so when she came down it's like i think after the third or fourth time we linked that she told me exactly what she used to do what she was doing before and, and whatnot all right so when you saying that she was showing you prices Mm. What kind of prices was she charging when she was going out, and what kind of service was Why? she doing? I'm talking about, the f- <laughs> I'm talking about the full works. Like I'm saying, like it was like I think forty, fifty pound for BJ, like um sixty pound for sex. Um, mm. I think one hundred and twenty for like a um all night or anal or some something like that. But it was it was it was mind blowing. I I didn't really when. I didn't realise these things actually existed, as I said, like, and I didn't even know about these sites as well. So um, at that point there, to be honest, most men would have just thought, you know what, did this thing, like, allow it. <laughs> mm. But I'm I'm very spiritual. So, like, um, he without sin cast the first stone. Like, everyone's got a past. We all got skeletons in our closet. And as I said, for me, it was more of a tip that she said she stopped doing what she was doing to get with man. All right. So when you been told mm-hmm. that she was an escort, what happened after that? I just basically we, after we spoke, um, I tried to get her. I tried speaking about trying to get her into normal work, mm. um, and yeah, it just basically wasn't happening. Every time she kept asking me for money, saying that she ain't got money, um, and then eventually we broke. We eventually broke up because basically she, I said, you know, you need me, you need peas. Just go out and get your peas in it. So she went out and she come back with I think she come up with some money like the next I think the next day or something she called me and told me yeah she got some money so she's all right now um I said oh what you done a thing she goes yeah she went to go see one of our old clients I said well what are you calling me for car there's no like listen I'm not really on that man needs a queen in it like not not no hoe and I'm not like it's just not gonna happen yeah and that's yeah. so did you think that you could change her when she told you about yeah I actually subconsciously think I think I did like subconsciously because I thought I don't I don't really believe that um certain things that we get into I think it's actually down to experience of life and like um certain things that you're shown like wrong and we've all got we've all got like freaky sides and stuff like that but to go through what she was going through at quite a young age I mean I thought there was something else in it so generally um yeah I just tried to get to know her and understand that type of situ and do you know how long she was doing it for before she met you Nah, I, f- I think a couple of years. Like, mm. but no. Nah. So she's gone out there. She's bought the money back. So she's yeah. gone out there because you've told her yeah. that you ain't got no money to give to her. Mm. She's gone out there, worked, got yeah. the money, come back to you. Did she think by coming back to you when she's got no money that you was gonna get with her again? I, 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 I think so. Like, I think she thought I, 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 I thought okay, it's all right because she done. Like, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what goes through people's minds sometimes. It was just, it was just weird. But um, yeah, I just I, I told her I couldn't. I couldn't be with her or anything. And then that's when she dropped the bombshell on me. Um, and she was like, well, I hear that, but um, we got something to take care of as well. Mm. I was like, um, what? She said, she's prex. Mm. And that's kind of, um, yeah, how I actually found out. And I thought at the time, I thought she was, I thought she was yabbing. Like, you know, one of the ones I thought, it's like, she's literally gassing. Like she just, she's telling me she's when I got peas. She thought I was going to be on it. Cause like, obviously I haven't gone on the whole ins and outs of the relationship. Cause it's not really about that. But obviously you talk about things and she was asking me, Rush, we can make a lot of money and rare, rare, all this stuff like that. So you had all these conversations anyway. So I think somehow she thought I would be on, uh, she's got peas, but I just, no, nah, I just did that. Like, so mm. obviously uh, we just went about business. Then she turned around and told me, oh, but she's pregs and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, nah, she's, I'm, I'm hearing she's chat. I'm, I'm thinking she's chatting rubbish because previously we actually, during the relationship, we went to go, she, we basically, she, she, we done the thing. Um, we weren't, weren't strapped up. She told me because obviously she was on this game, like on the, she was a working girl. Um, she's always ever been strapped up and like, because she actually cares for me, like I felt stupid and pulled the thing off and she asked me to and said, um, obviously after she's going to go and get the morning after pill, we both went to the clinic together. Um, 
what's it called she went into the room and naturally as a man you don't go into the room with them um she came out i thought it was done and dusted and then we went about our business um mm. We're moving on, relationship goes on, she's gone and done this working thing, then she's called back to me and then told me, bang, um, yeah, but she's pregnant. I've said, about how are you pregnant? She goes, remember when she went to go and get the morning after? I said, yeah. She said, yeah, she didn't take it. I said, what do you mean you didn't take it? She said, she thinks it's abortion. I said, how is it abortion? She said, well, she thinks that it's just similar as abortion because it's like um, one of them ones where she um she like if you have a child you should have a child you shouldn't turn around and stop it and if she takes the pill i said well what about man tossing off and dashing mm. that in the bin and all the condoms and that ain't yeah. that abortion indirectly but um cool so we kept we were just arguing back and forth um and then i said you know what go and do that because if you're doing that technically it takes two to tango yes um but if you're on contraception and something fails, then we can have a child. That's understandable. If I'm, if I strap up and it fails again, you can have a child. But if you actually have, if we actually, if I believe you're on contraception or I believe you're going, you've t done something to take care of it. And then you haven't actually done that. And effectively you've stolen my property. You've stolen my sperm effectively. And if that's the case, I'm going to take you to court. Fine. Fuck it, forget it. All right, let me just ask this question. She asked you to pull it off. Yeah. The, the dom. Yeah. Yeah. And you pulled it off. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we know. Even after we off it, before we even got down to the thing, it was like one one day she was like, "Raw, you always strap up," and I'm like, "Yeah." Mm. She's like, "But she's been. We've been. We've both been tested how many times? Like, so and she's not working anymore. So, like, you know, as as a man, you kind of get yeah, 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 wherever you get, mm. and that's yeah, that's how how it happened. So you got caught up in the moment then. Yeah. All right. Cool. And yeah. was that. The first and last you done that at that particular yeah, time. Yeah, that was the only, only that was time. that was the only time. And the thing is, is literally about a I think a couple of days after that we had the argument. Um, so we, she said she's going to go. And, she's going to go and get some money. Then we had stopped seeing each other. Mm. So that's basically when that's uh, when she's telling me she's pregs. I'm thinking, but you're gassing because how can you be pregs already when you just went, you, you just gone to go see someone? We took this thing about what two three weeks ago. You know, you're chatting. You're just basically trying to save the relationship, innit? Um, and then she and I said, I'm gonna take you for if you if you are pregs when you come when it comes, I'm gonna take you for court. Like let's let's go and do this then. And I'll tell the judge you stole my sperm. And uh, then all right, let me just stop there. I was, was want to stop you there. Go on. So there was there any time at any point you thought this child may not have been yours because she went and slept with somebody else in between yeah. that time. I exactly thought that. That's why I said what I said about um, I'll take her to court and those things there because I was trying to feel it. I was trying to feel it out, um, and it's one of the ones where like naturally it's like once I've once I've said that it's like yeah cool let's do this, but instead of that what she she then said okay cool had a, um, carried on arguing and said you know what f you I just thought you'd be a good dad remember I cheated on you it's not even yours anyway like I just thought you'd be a good dad but you it sounds like you're gonna be a prick blah 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 cut the phone and blocked me wow and that was basically it and literally because obviously as I said she was on the game the man for man tried to be there. Then she turned around and telling me she had this took it taking this thing and she hadn't taken this thing. I'm thinking, yo, you know what? Good riddance to bad rubbish. And when she blocked me, I just left it as that. All right. So you left it like that. How long was she blocked you for? Till I found out about my son and he was a year and a half later from a friend on Facebook. Okay, so this whole time, um, you never knew hundred percent it was yours or not, and then you never knew when the child was gonna be born. Did you not have any time to say to yourself for you to go and even try and look for this girl? Yeah, I, the thing is, at, um, let's say like about maybe about three, four months after. Mm. I mean, I tried the number, and then um, it was it, it was blocked. Okay. Um, I think I was passing the area. I just went down, went around to the house, and I thought, why do I need to go? What's the point? I thought to myself, like, why am I going to go and f like find out? She knows where I'm at, and if she's if it's real, then yeah, so be it. But you know what? Nah, that's whatever. I just thought, yeah, I just left so it. So when she was pregnant, did she ever what to maybe to your knowledge? Did she try to get herself a normal regular job? I don't know. No, I don't. I don't know. Okay. Um, while she was um, at that point, she had blocked me. Um, I didn't find out. Like I said, till my son was a year and a half, mm. so I hadn't no, had no contact, no nothing. So you're not too sure if she was still working at the time, no, like, doing the working girl stuff no. before her baby was showing. No. All right, cool. So your friend has told you that there's a child on Facebook. Yeah. Um, maybe might be yours. 
<laughs> nah, it's um he called so moving forward now, about a year and a half later, my boy calls me and he's like, Yo, spy, um, I think you need to holler at this girl, um, let's just call her Bina. But he's like, Yeah, I just think you need to call her this girl Bina. I'm like, Why? He's like, Bro, she's saying about she got your you. I'm like, mm. my you? I'm thinking, my child. Now, these times there, it kind of slightly overlaps into my daughter because these times there, me and my daughter's mum, where basically um, we just find out we're having a child and this is like around about December of 2015. So I'm like, I'm like, I'm just found out I'm having a child and we're still in that whole stage of what to do and like whatnot. So I'm not even worrying, I'm not even going to consider about this one at the moment. I'm thinking, nah. Then I was like, bro, how am I going to come up in your conversation anyway? Like, let's be real. Like, yeah. why are you talking about man to next chicks in it? And he said, nah. What happened is, um, obviously, man trying to get her to come down to the yard, and he's telling me that she, he's telling her he lives in Elephant, and she's like, nah, she don't link no one in, um, no man in South, especially from Elephant, got a baby father. He's like, a baby father? Like, yeah, well, obviously, man's known from the ends, in it? Who's, who's your baby father? Mm. And she says, oh, Spyro. He's like, what? Mm. Nah, there's only one spy. There's only one Spyro. There's only one spy, and nah, he ain't got no you, you know? <sighs> like, and he's like so I'm like so she, he's like okay cool so that's when he calls me and tells me and that's what he told me so I'm like it, make, it makes sense how my name comes up in the convo so I'm mm. like alright cool so he's um, he said that he drops he sends her a picture of my Facebook and she says yeah that's definitely me oh. so he gives me a number now I call her and I'm these times when he gives me a number I'm thinking Bina Bina from like north or east, I don't even know. Listen, this is not this is not her real name, right? Well, this is not her real name. No, okay, no. that's fine. Can we be, yeah, here we can't see real names. Yeah, this is not her real name. Okay, cool. Go yeah, on. that's what I said. Just call so, it. Being that is baby mother number one. Yeah, cool. Go on. Yeah, um, and then what's it called? In the end, I was like, oh, so when I answered the when she when I called her and she answered the phone, I was like, oh, raw. I knew that voice straight away. I was like, what's going on? She's like, hey, spy. I was like, yeah, you're right. Start talking said yeah sh um yeah she got a child i was like yeah i heard about that i remember you telling me something about before but you ain't holler at me since and she said um yeah we can talk about that later can we can we link up i said maybe maybe but i just i need to process certain things at the time and then i said yeah just i'll call you in a couple of weeks and then i looked off the phone um and kind of life something mad happened to me we're not going to go too much into that but mm. basically i ended up getting set up on um on a serious serious gun charge mm. um and i ended up on remand in january so these times there i'm actually um, i'm actually a sales executive for my um, my friend's hair hair tablets and i've got a interview with boots i'm selling my own weave company online called be weave me um, and I'm putting it into packs and certain other stores on um, and shops. And now I'm being um, I'm being arrested on uh, madness. Yeah. So I ended up in remand, so I couldn't even deal with the whole son situation. Whilst actually, my daughter's now basically due to be born. All right. So let me just stop it right there, right? Because I think we have moved forward a bit too fast. All right. So I'm gonna <laughs> hold it. Cause I'm gonna do some backtracking a bit. Yeah. So going back to your mate. Mm -hmm. The one who spoke to her. Mm -hmm. Did he know that that was your BMs to start off with? Nah, it was just the, the connection with the name, my name, the ends we're from, and yeah, what she had when he sent the picture. And from then, he, he stopped. He, he didn't entertain that conversation no more. Yeah. He, he <laughs> yeah. didn't try and go to her after enough. No, no, he didn't. He, did, he, okay. did. he, he just hollered at me a few times, um, mm -hmm. asked me what I'm going to do and if it's real. And I told him, well, I need, I spoke to Mumsy. Mumsy said, I need a DNA test. Mumsy's not even hearing it like until we've got DNA because I'm not, I'm not really, I'm normally aware of myself. So okay. man's pushing 30 and I ain't got no kids. And I know I'm about to have one. How am I about to have two? Right, let's just put that there. Then he's a real Brendan then because you know, yeah. certain men are sly like that and they'll still maybe try and go there. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So he's, yeah. he's a real one. Now, nah, he, he has, I, I have to shout out to my boy still. Like, I'm not even going to lie. I shout out to my boy because he, 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 he's, I know him from school and we, it's one of them ones we don't talk all the time. But as soon as he heard that, he hollered at me. And I even put in my, when we move forward, I'll tell you, but I even put him in my cases because mm -hmm. it's one of them ones, I've, if it weren't for him, I wouldn't even know nothing. Cool, 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 cool. All right, so um, so the gun charge, um, obviously that's on at the pending case mm -hmm. at the time. Yeah. You've got your daughter, um, she's on her way or she's really now landed? She's on her way. Like okay, she's so, just, just being conceived. Okay, cool. So at that stage, baby mother number two, mm-hmm. Did you tell her that you may now have a son uh, yeah. on road? How did that happen? 
Um, so at that stage now, so it's basically at first I didn't tell her, um, but when I ended up um, when I ended up in um, landing inside, like we we were, like I used to stay at her house a lot after we um, had the decision about the child. So I stayed in her house a lot. One time I left her house and I went home. I see a note on my door. And I was thinking, right, what, what's this all about? So obviously, then the police told me where it was, whatever. I'm on my way to, to Marsh. When she comes to visit me, we start talking about certain things. And um, and then she actually finds out before I even know. She tells me, um, so because she has a key to my house. She goes, I've gone into your house and um, a certain child maintenance letters. Mm. I was like, child maintenance? Mm. She's like, yeah, about a son. Mm. I was like, huh? And he hasn't got your last name though. I was like, it's just weird. I was like, do you know what? Yeah, there is there is something in the woodworks that I I, I think, but I don't even want. It. And she started. You know how women are; they start doing calculations, like what, what, <laughs> like like. And she was like, so when did you not meet her? And she realized that now. Nah, I think it was like two or three months um, just before her, before her. I think it's even about about five about four or five months before her. Okay, so she got pregnant at a short space of time when you was with her the second mother, yeah. No, no, she got pregnant uh, basically a, a, a year after. Okay. Yeah. So how long was you with her before she got pregnant? Oh, about seven to nine months. Okay, cool. So in the, within the first year? Yeah, within the first of year. Of your lot's relationship. All right, so you're in jail, so yeah. inside the bin. Yeah. Because it's, it's the On remand now. On remand though, yeah? Yeah. Pending, yeah? Yeah. All right, so she's coming to there to tell you about this child maintenance. Yeah. All right, now on this child maintenance... What was she actually asking? Did she think that because you didn't respond back to her after you spoke to yeah, her at that time? It was the first, the first one or two visits was a bit mad. And the thing is, this is why I have to, I, I, like I have so much respect for my daughter's mom, but um, and it hasn't been easy. But there's certain little things that make me have respect for her, and it's things like this because when she actually came to, when she actually came, came there, like she, firstly, me being in remand, she didn't, she, she knew that had nothing to do with me, and she was, she was there with me to say that we're gonna get out. But when she came to see me about it, she asked me about the child maintenance. She was doing the whole calculations, and then she's, then she was like, you know what, nah, um. If he, if he is yours, okay, cool, we'll sort it, but we can't even deal with that. We can't even actually work that now. Like, you just need to get out of here and things like that. So she was she was really, really, like, kind of by me during that time. And the whole child maintenance thing, it didn't, it didn't affect her negatively, but I knew it must have played on her mind. Was you inside when your daughter then came along or was you no. at your daughter's birth? So whilst I was inside, and this is how um, I... No one can tell me, like, everyone has their own faith, but no one can tell me anything about the Most High because when I went there, I was praying like crazy. I was, I mean, I was, I was screaming at the Most High and I was saying things that I would never dare utter again. Like, I remember, for example, saying, if if God really exists, if you, if you are, if you're true, if you're the Most you're the most High and the righteous of you, open this frigging cell door now. And I remember the cell door opened and two screws came and said, yeah, I've got a cell spin. And I was like, and for those who don't know, a cell spin is basically when they come to raid your cell. And I was sitting there thinking, but after about 10, 15 minutes of ranting, screaming at the ceiling, for two police officers to come at my door and then open the door, that was one thing. And then I got a Bible like in there from an Excel. So, so many things actually happened. Now I was praying and I was believing that was coming out because I'm not a gang member. I'm not associated to gangs. I haven't been in trouble in the law in the last 10 to 15 years. So I was like, this is not my portion. I'm not supposed to be here. So um, I had to change solicitors twice. Um, and my daughter's mom helped me actually change solicitors once. My old best friend helped me change solicitors again. The judge was refusing for me to change the third time. And then um, in the end, basically he changed it. And I remember saying on stand that um, the, the Bible says you judge a tree by its fruit. So if I haven't been in trouble in the law in the last 10 years, and I'm not a gang member, I'm not associated to gangs, so please tell me what brought the police there to my house in the first place to find the gun, other than the fact that the person who put it there must have been the one who told them it was there. And then I bust case. Now, when I bust case, my daughter was due, um, I think she was due 6th of August. She came out 29th of July. I bust case 22nd of July. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I bust case just, in, just time. in time to come home and meet my daughter. Mm -hmm. And and she came out in her sack. And it, as being Nigerian, for me, that's the, my mum said that's a, a big sign. So her name, is, um, I don't mind saying my daughter's name, but her name is Shay, and um, her full name Oluwa Shay, which means God has done this, and that is the reason because I I bust case for something that had nothing to do with me, just to come in time to see my daughter to see her actually being born, and then came home to a whole pile of CSA letters. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> cool. So I'm going to talk about the, um, just that part there. Do you think that you were set up or someone tried to set you? Oh, 100%. There was no doubt about it. Like, um, And I feel like um, it was part of my, my journey to understand that sometimes the people who you hang with or the people who you get certain things from, um, no matter what, if they're not if they're not righteous, if they're not on your path, like you don't have to be a mechanic to go into a mechanics workshop and catch a spark. Mm. You understand? Like, and that's actually what it is when they say birds of a feather flock together. Not necessarily because actually, if a bunch of birds flies over your head, you might get shot on, or you might catch a few feathers, and that's actually where it is. So I realized that my part, my life was changing, and as I said, I hadn't been in trouble in the law in ten years. I was an operational supervisor for security, and I'd done the royal wedding. So why am I hang- why am I still got certain friends, certain shady friends that they can come to my house and put things in my house? That's actually where it was. So, so they actually came in your house and planted it in your. That's house. my my like I don't know for hundred percent, but according to the statement. The police came. They at first they came. Um, they raided my house. They raided his house. They found something at my house and things at his house. Um, I was like, I, I was there telling them, "What is this?" Like, mm. <laughs> like I was. And the thing is, because I, I had a bit of a shady past when I was younger, and it's like it felt like all my past was coming back to haunt you. Yeah. And I was like, but for the first time in my life, I haven't done anything in my life. And I'm now facing 25 to 35 years. And two solicitors telling me that there's nothing I can do. So the only thing that made me realize, and I was like, I'm having about to have a daughter. Now there is no way that the most high would give me, my, and before I knew, I, even though I knew about my son, I didn't actually acknowledge that part yet. So I was thinking my daughter's my firstborn. So I was like, there's no way the most high would give me a child, my firstborn in this place for me not to be there. So I'm coming out and I had to really change my mentality. I put my CV down and everything. So when my daughter came out, she's the first thing that changed my life. And um, and then looking at her, to be honest, I actually say that she's the reason that actually I, I went for my son and I go back so hard for my son. Because when I came to see the letters of child maintenance, after a while, seeing her grow and seeing certain things, it's like, but do I have another? Mm. It's not his fault. How many months or years did it take for you to then go and look for your son? So after I had come out now, um, basically, my daughter's July, around about Christmas of that, that same year, 2016, it's like Christmas had come. I'd seen my daughter's um, crawling for the first time. I'd seen like her first two sprout. Um, so I've seen a lot of firsts and I was missing my sons and I was thinking technically he must be going on, is it two? And I, I was just, cause I couldn't even remember. And then um, I remember my dad said something to me. My dad said, you know, sometimes a child in, in child in life is a blessing. And sometimes things happen in life because you haven't gone to receive your blessing. Mm. And then I was sitting there listening to that and thinking, and then a two pack tune came on. And um, I remember the bars because it actually, literally made me burst out in tears okay. and it was like um my mother um was called my father was on top my mother screaming stop from a single drop this is what they got not to disrespect my father but my pops was a loser all he wanted to do was beat my mum and abuse her and i thought to myself i've never wanted my child to think like that i've never i've always said i'm never gonna have a child and them not know that i'm there mm. and i just literally i was put like tears were pouring out my eyes and i couldn't stop like, and I weren't bubbering, but they were just rolling. And I thought, I've got a son. It's the first time I actually said, and I think it was, it was like six months after, and I was like, I've got a son. Because before when people asked me, I said, yeah, yeah, I've got a boy out there. But I was like, I've got a son. I've actually got a son. And I've got, I've got, I've got three or four, I've got three sisters and I had no brothers. So when I grew up, I always wanted a son. And as a man, you like want a little boy. And I was yeah. like, I've got a son. So that's... After uh, six months, I went back for him. So after the six months, how did you do that? Um, I basically, I contacted, I, I had a whole, like a pile, like it was like about that pile, a pile of that child maintenance letters asking me for ridiculous fees, telling me that I'm in like three and a half thousand pounds debt. So I contacted them, I asked them to do a DNA test. They'd done a DNA test, confirmed it was mine. Um, I told my mum, my mum said, the, cool. um, so being Nigerian, we said, well, let's do it traditional got my dad um my big sister we went around to their house had the family meeting um her mum tried to cuss me out and say the typical i just wanted to f her and miss off and i said to her no and I, after being bombarded and slandered i just literally was honest i was like listen this is what happened your daughter was this blah 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 i actually tried to stay there i actually almost could have fallen for her if she actually was willing to fix up like but no i'm, I'm here now 
and this is it. So her mum was never aware that she was doing escort work. Their family was never aware until I had brought things up. And when you told them, did they believe you or did it ask her that she denied it? At first, no, they, they didn't believe me. And I think it was a point where they, you know, parents don't want to believe something about your child to a point where they, they hated me for even disclosing it. Um, so the the meeting, the initial meeting was very quite, quite ten, a lot of tension. And then eventually we got some headway um, and I remember my mom said she would um, she would pay fifty pounds a month as a direct de- uh, direct direct deposit to her account, um, and anything that she needs other than that, she can just ask me like if he needs nappies or if he needs diapers. And actually, he wasn't a year and a half at the time. He was literally just a, he was just he was a yeah. Now at that time, now he was a year and a half before he wasn't. It was only a couple of months. Mm. But um, so my mom said, yeah, he just have a, he has a daughter. He's there with his daughter. Um, he's actually the main guardian for his daughter and I don't think he would have a son and not want to be there so I will do this cool they refused it they said no we stick with the child maintenance blah 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 my mum was like listen we're Nigerian now and you're Ghanaian we're African we don't have governments in our in our in our, our face just just we just come to our own agreements you know um, they didn't have it so we just basically so me and her spoke after and she said she wants to make some some improvements and make some headway and um, she apologized for not telling me she said she was kind of scared about how it all happened and um yeah so we started talking and tried to and i started at first started having a slight relationship with him okay so how do you get introduced to your son um obviously he's a bit older so how did she introduce so when I um, basically so after it was on the first initial meeting, my okay. my parents my parents asked to see him, um, and what was mad is my son's mum, Bina, was upstairs. Okay. She didn't want to come down. She didn't. She refused to come down. Embarrassed and, and guilty. I, I don't even know. My mum was my mom was like, come. She wants to see her because she doesn't even know who she is. She just wouldn't come down. And she she said, so then, then we we're asking, can we at least see the son? Like so. Then they bring. Um, then they went up and got um, got my son, and he came down. And then they said his name. They said it told me his name. Um, and I was like, okay, cool. Um, and then they told me he's got another last name. Um, and the reason why he has another last name is because she initially thought that he was this other guy's son. Um, so um, she went to get, and it's only that a DNA test confirmed that this other guy wasn't um, wasn't his. That she came and sought me out. All right, so <laughs> let me just clear this up. <laughs> you, so she told you in the beginning it was supposed to be your child. Did she go and tell this other guy that she think it was his child as well? I I assume so because obviously she told me in the beginning that it was mine. Then she told me that he wasn't mine. Obviously blocked me. Um, didn't hear from her again Now I've recontacted her She's now um, Her family has told me That she believed um, He was another man's And that It's only that a DNA test Has proved that he isn't Another man's So when she <coughs> was Claiming this other man In the beginning Do you think he actually Took it on Because he's got the name she, Oh yeah she, she told me she, t- she told me he did She fully told me he did She told me he was there She He was there for a part Of her pregnancy Um like and yeah, he was there doing everything he knew, everything. And it's just that when he found out he wasn't his, it broke his heart. And then I was like, so why has he still got his last name? Mm, crazy. <laughs> no, it's crazy. Still, this is a crazy story. All right. So going back to um, when she was still with my guy, yeah. so she kind of said, "Do you reckon?" Oh, she must have. She must have stepped with him on purpose, unprotected, mm-hmm. to convince him after. Like this oh, may yeah. be his child. Yeah, yeah. That's the, that's the only way. Yeah, I can no, think it's true. It. It's a trap. What yeah. she done because she maybe was thinking she wasn't too sure if it may been yours or not. See, now my my understanding actually is when it actually happened back in the days. My understanding is that when she told me she went to go and see a client, actually he was a bit more than a client, and mm. she had cheated on me back then. Um, so, so do you think she was seeing the two of you at the same time the whole time? Oh, wow! I never. Oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah, possibly. I never. It had ne- weirdly, that had never crossed my mind at all because mm. she seemed. It was weird. Like she was. She seemed so open with her with how she was that I wouldn't believe that she was being deceitful in that sense. Mm. But actually, yeah, there's. It's not. It's not known. I mean, I've known girls it, to actually have a have another guy on side. Yeah, they can juggle it. They yeah. can juggle it, and then the minute now, because if you wasn't giving her money, mm-hmm. maybe this other guy was giving her the money. 
Mm. So she's maybe trying to juggle the two, but she's able to continue with her yeah. uh, her her life because this man is obviously funding her life. But it's just hearsay. We don't know for yeah. sure. It's yeah. just obviously just something we just been we just kind of trying to put some puzzles together. Yeah. Anyway, so you discuss with the family with the money situation. Um, she's saying no, they want to keep you on the CSA. Mm. What did you do after that? So after that, me and her just spoke. She said that she would like to eventually remove the CSA. Um, she wants us to have a relationship, and she wants she just wants me and him to have a relationship, and and me get to know him. She said she's sorry that she how she went about things. Um, she was scared that when when I told her about court because every because um, I handle a lot of cases in court. Um, like I'm I'm a litigant in person when I go to things. So she's she was she said she was quite nervous about that, and then she said yeah she did actually cheat on me, and she thought he was um she. She didn't. She didn't actually know. Um, so, but the thing is, now she actually knows. She does want um, her son to have a father in his life, and she wants me to be around. So I said, okay, you know what? Well, yeah, we'll start. Um, we'll start thinking. So she goes. It's just that it's a bit mad because her parents, um, her parents are kind of really angry about everything. Um, so. Um, just give it some time. I said, well, to be honest, your parents don't need to know anything. Like, um, this is our child. Um, when I want to come see him, I come see him. If you want to bring him down, bring him down. Um, and so be it. And um, we started um, just basically seeing each other briefly like that. Um, and at first, it was going all right. Mm. At first. Did you get introduced as uncle or d- or dad or by your name? I got introduced by my name, by okay. my government name. Um, I don't mind. My government name is Stephen, but I got introduced as Stephen and I was like, it, it done something to my spirit at first, but I un- I, I overstood why. Um, so, um, yeah, but he was still quite, he was still quite young. Um, these times he's, I think he's just, he's a year and a half going on too. So he's still like eating in the chair and stuff and whatnot. But, yeah, we were building. I mean, I saw him probably about six, seven months at that period right. till it all stopped again. And why did it stop? Whilst we were seeing each other, she kept making like advances at me. Um, and when I say making advances at me, I mean she like we were seeing, we were chatting to each other. At first, we started linking, um, and then I I wasn't actually on it. Like, and it's mad because I I know him. Like, I didn't know him, so I wanted to know him. So. When we, when we, when we, after the, I think the first, after the first or second conversation we actually had, and she told me about her parents and how we can make it work, she, um, I went to go see her, um, it was all cool, then we linked and we done a ting, um, <laughs> and then as we done a ting, like, I just thought to myself, oh. yeah, as we done a ting, I thought to myself, I went home and I was thinking, why did I do that? And I thought to myself, it's like, the thing is, I'm just trying to actually build up my relationship with my son, but the thing is she just went back into the old head so okay so how, how did that all happen so you went to her house yeah what was it putting a child to sleep and then was it would you yeah, not just talking how now, did it all play out and that's what so that's what happened so basically so he went to he went to sleep and as him you, a bedtime story no no it's just like um his like you know kids afternoon nap mm. so as he went to sleep then she's basically talking to me um telling me that how oh you know what we never really had a chance and blah 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 and how now she's older she's telling me she's not she's not working anymore she actually stopped that kind of while she was um, before she was pregnant um and all, all this stuff and it's basically cool so i was like so literally i just basically yeah that we, we done a thing that day um then I went down. So did you move to her? Or did she move to you? No, she moved to me. Okay. She actually moved to me, and I kind of gave in. Mm. So, I think literally the next week I came up, mm. the same thing happened, except I didn't. So he went to sleep. Then she moved to me again, and I said to her, "This is mad because it's like all that's actually happening is I'm coming to look at him, and then." You're giving her a service. We're kind of getting into a thing, like, mm. and she's like, "Oh, it's me." You know what? Bring him down to mine. I was just like, "I was like, because actually, the thing is, if I'm his dad, he needs to see a different environment. And um, bring him down to mine. Let us go down to the let's let us go out to the park and let's go and do things and build up a, a relationship." Um, she kind of wasn't on it. Um, like, um, so she said, "Yeah, yeah, she'll do it." But then the next time I was going up there, she was like, oh, she can't come down this time. So I come up this time and she'll come down. I went up, she tried to put it on me. I didn't have it. And then I noticed actually every time I went up there, she kept trying to put it on me until 
um i literally i mean i i, I don't want to get too graphic but i remember there was actually a time when my son was literally falling asleep on the sofa and she was trying to unzip my, myself and, and 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 i was like I, I was like bro what are you doing like seriously allow it and um she was like oh come on man i was like no nah, but my, son, just, my son's sleeping there and there's another time like she, she and she'll get she'll get into a huff and be like oh fuck's sake if she feels rejected yeah then there's another time her dad was actually upstairs like and she was like come just bring me over the chair and i was like are you serious i was like i was like he's over there like he's sleeping the dad's upstairs she goes yeah but he ain't gonna come down i was like imagine imagine like that happens and your dad comes down and sees wagwan like do you think i'm ever gonna be able to have any sort of relationship Listen, I'm not trying to get out of you, uh, mm. but in the beginning, you said that you were a freak, innit? And that's the reason why you got all my. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So what? That ain't no. No, because. What, 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 you talking about? what you call that then? Well, actually, we, we've grown up now. Okay. Because that's yeah. the thing. So when we were younger, we didn't have kids. So, like the Bible says, when, um, when I was a child, I played as a child, mm. I operated as a child, I did child things. And when I became a man, I put away childish things. We've now got a child together. Mm. I don't know this son, I don't know him at all. I want to build a relationship with him. So every time I'm coming down, you're trying to put it on me. And I felt compelled to actually do something with her. It got to it got to that point. So it's like when I actually told her, I was like, no, stop this. Like, because when I said when I said your dad's upstairs, I said I want I want actually playing because I was like, I need to have this relationship with him. But when I, when I, I you're gone. Sorry, 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 sorry interrupt you. Go on. But do you think that you gave her mixed messages because you slept with her again when you did get when you not did reconnect it? I think initially I did. And then when I tried to pull it back, I think I tried to explain it properly. And I said to her, because I remember one, one specific conversation, I said, like, what I'm saying is that um, when I come up, I want to come up for him. And then other times I want to come up for you. So we can go out and do something and get to know you. Because I don't know who you are. I don't know what's your favorite color, what type of food you like. Like, you don't even know what my favorite foods are. Um, and then I don't know, I don't know him. How did he come up with his name? Like, I mean, he's got a double barrel name. How did his name come up? Who chose it for him? Does he have a naming ceremony? Um, all these things I don't know. And it's very hard for me because I'm actually full on dad with my daughter. So it literally feels like I've got one. But then another, I don't even know anything about. All right, so I'm going to ask you this question. So you was with your second daughter's mother, right? Mm -hmm. So was you sleeping with your first baby mother, even still you're still with your second child's mother? Oh, no, 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 no. So what happened in that relationship then? No, with my, with my second daughter's mother, no. We had actually um, we had actually broken up before my daughter was actually born. We oh, were, okay. Yeah, so before my daughter was born, we, we, when we had the conversations, but we were just basically knowing that we're going to have a child. So we were, we were very... And what, yeah. what made that relationship break up? We just, we had come to the conclusion. We just weren't, we weren't, we had different goals, different dreams. Different so do you think that, because at, at that time you was inside, mm -hmm. and she has found out that there is another child maybe lurking around. Mm -hmm. Do you think that may have put a pressure? No, because no. while we were inside at that time, we tried to get to that, get back together. Okay, and, okay. And we, um, and it was actually, and as I said, she was like a pillar to me, to be honest. Okay. Um, she was there for me. She came regularly to visit me. She would write me letters. She got to know my parents and um, she's Jamaican. If you know, obviously Jamaican Africans don't get on very well. So imagine her going to my mum's for the first time and telling her, mm. um, yeah, I'm pregnant with your son but he's inside like what yeah yeah so yeah. she was nah she was we tried but it was just one in one certain people is not compatible you got problems with the set well the first baby mother she's telling you now that because you're not sleeping with her no more mm -hmm. all right what happened after that situation was so it after that she just literally she cut it so after i i, I said to her listen i'm going to come up him sometimes for him and then i'll come up sometimes for you so hold on. so when you're saying you're coming sometimes for her mm. is that to spend time with her yeah because i sleep with her as well not, not even sleep with her like just the thing is over. yeah because i yeah. after i think we had slept together like i think i think maximum twice after that <laughs> like <laughs> oh, no, no, no. you said once no now you're saying twice no i said i said when we first remember i said oh, when okay. we first went up okay yeah okay. that's what i said when we first went up that's what i'm saying so after that i said i pulled back and i was like no i need to just go and see okay. yeah okay so okay. after that it wasn't there was there was literally just nothing happening you mm. understand but she kept trying it and was that's she talking thing. about maybe trying to get have a family again with you? Yeah, initially, like initially she was. That's the reason why, like I said, when I when I actually felt susceptible to it, because what she actually said, which was I actually felt was true. She said she I I, I didn't give her a chance to actually be in a relationship mm. with her, and it's not really fair. And now we've got a child, and so that's obviously that's why I said when I actually ended up sleeping with her. But then that's when I was like, raw, I need to well, I need to know you again, and that's mm. when that things happened, and I've, I've pulled it back now. Okay, like so I'm like, okay. 
cool. So as we're as I'm going up, but every time I'm going up, she's just putting it on me, and I'm basically refusing her all the time. Yeah. yeah. So when I actually now literally just tell her, look, look if um, and I remember I, I gave her an ultimatum. I said, you come down seven times, and then I'll come up. And once you come down and stay up, stay with me, then we'll turn around and tell your parents that we're together, and we'll try this thing. Okay. Okay. And okay. that never happened. Yeah. So it just couldn't happen. So what I'm saying is that that it, it couldn't actually happen. And what I realized is that actually what she was doing is she was using my son just to get me back. Mm. Um, but there was no, there was nothing actually, no relationship in, in between me with my son. Mm. So, yeah. All right, cool. So you now can't see your son now no more. Nope, All no right. more. What happened after that? So um, I think, let's say a couple of months have gone past. Um, and the thing is, what what I want to make clear is that it's like I because I've actually felt compelled to sleep with her. This is the reason why I stopped seeing him. Like that's actually where it is. A lot of people don't realize that. Um, like men, they think like basically a man will sleep with anything. But I've got a son. Firstly, a year and a half's gone past. I haven't seen him. I've gone up to turn around and see him. She's turned around and told me, nah, um, well, you, you, you don't know him and blah, 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 and all these things there. I'm saying, well, just come to the park. She's arguing with me, telling me no. Then eventually she st- starts sitting next to you and starts rubbing up on you. As a man, you just turn around and think, wow, you start thinking, how am I going to do that? You, you understand? Mm. And you end up feeling, and that's what I'm saying, I felt compelled that I had to do certain things. And then when it was like, when I told her that I can't do that anymore, she's like, well, I can't see it. Like, she's like, well, you can't see him unless you're going to see him with my parents. I'm like, the same parents who don't like me. I was like, you know, just bring him down. Let, him, let me go to the park. I'll take him to the park. Bring him back to yours. Cool. When she, when that didn't happen, I just, I just basically, I, I literally went into a recluse and I just shut down. So about six, seven months went past, and then I didn't see him. And then randomly, I called her again. Um, I think it was around about his near his birthday, and I called her again and said I want to come and see him for his birthday. Um, and she was like, "Why are you calling out after so long?" And I said, "Um." Because I've tried to, I tried to build a relationship before. You didn't let me, but I just want to build up a relationship. Mm. So when I went back there, I think I went on his birthday. We took him down to the park. As soon as we came from the park, um, we we're walking back, and it was nice. And it was the first time I actually had a nice time. Mm. And I was, I was saying, "Oh, this is nice." Like you see, um, it doesn't have to be animosity and stuff. She, gave, I gave her a hug goodbye. She leaned in to kiss me and grab my nuts. Mm. I pushed her away and said, "Like I was like, what are you doing? Like come on, man. You know I'm seeing someone." She goes, "Oh, you're seeing someone." I didn't even know. I said, of course, I've told you that. It's been over about a year and, and whatnot. You didn't even ask anyway. And she's like, oh, okay, whatever. And then she ran upstairs. Um, after that, she said, you're not seeing him again. And she just she texted me, you're not seeing him again. And I was like, what do you mean I'm not seeing him again? We just had a nice time. So just to, just to kind of catch your story, so the first time she told you you couldn't see your son, a few months has gone past. You reached out because mm-hmm. it's his birthday coming up. You obviously spent time of his birthday. In that time, you've now started up a new relationship with someone else. Mm-hmm. I actually started up. The, I actually had the relationship. It was like you know when you're talking to someone from before. So when I actually started, um, when I would actually recently go in to check him occasionally, and after me and her, whatever, it's like you know you're just chatting to people. So okay. that that time I was chatting to people. So it was just it was, it was more just at like the talking stage. It wasn't nothing yeah. serious. Yeah, but yeah. Something has now happened now where it is now serious. No, it's, it's still it, yeah. It's like we. I could see that it was getting serious. Okay. Because that was actually in my four and a half going on five year relationship. But I could see it was actually getting serious. Yeah. But at the time, I, when I told her beforehand, I was just talking to her. Mm. So now she's done that. And I've told her I'm seeing someone. Well, actually, I'm still in the talking stage, but it's mm. like... But you're just making it clear to yeah. her that there's another female around who I'm I'm looking to try and to get to know and you're trying yeah. to be serious about that situation. Yeah. And why is it always actually has to be... Why is it always some sort of intimate... Like why mm. it has to be physical like and it's about our son? Do you think that might be her love language? Yeah, this love language thing came out re- recently. It got me confused, okay. but yeah, I think, yeah. I only learned about this thing recently <laughs> myself, bro, yeah. So, right, yeah. Cool, so, um, she now stopped you from seeing your son the second time. Yeah. What did you then do after that? So, after that, now, I've gone to mediation, yeah. Mm-hmm. I've taken it to mediation. Um, mediation, um, they basically done the whole thing. They reached out to her. She's refused mediation. They've given me a um, authority to take it to court, but I don't want to go through the court system. So I literally just leave it. Um, I actually leave it for a, I think about another two or three months. I don't know what made me pick it up again. I just decided to call her back again, try to start it up again. She still said, oh, um, "I told you, you want to see me because you're my parents." I said, "What? Well, it's been like how many months?" She goes, "Yeah, exactly. Like, you want to see me because you're my parents." So I said, "Well, why don't you go to mediation?" She said, "I don't want to. I don't want. I don't need to talk to you." So I said mediation again. So these times now, I've gone to mediation t- 
two times then it's a third time over and it basically three times over the space of two or three years i've gone to mediation just to try and get her into mediation as opposed to going through the court system um and then she finally comes on the third time to mediation and when she comes um we have a discussion she says that she she tells the media that she's scared of of me because i live in south london um that i live in a bad area that are just basically all sorts of rubber excuses the mediator pacifies that and gets us to at least agree to something to start seeing each other once a week and go to the park as soon as that happened she flopped so did she <laughs> turn up not even once nah nah so after that i just literally just, just put in put it put my court case in and when it took it to court all right so when you took it to court what was you asking for in your statement now um when i took it to court I basically I told the court everything I'm telling you I pretty much told the court I was very honest um, and I basically said that I just basically want a relationship with my son I, I asked for and um, in long story short after the court case I got parental responsibility I got full um, I got a, a shared care living order and I had a stepped approach to seeing him so I had to see him one week in free she refused it she asked for supervised visits the judge said there's no safeguarding concerns they got a Kafka's report she, um, they refused us, um, that and they said okay we'll take him to the final trial I, I said I wanted to see him now so I agreed to a contact centre. They said, um, okay, we'll do minimum of three. That's like if um, as if someone has come from abroad just to build up the relationship. She was, um, and they expressed to her, after three visits, he's going to start staying overnight. It's not um, anything like that. They don't need the report from it. It's just because it's to make her feel better. Yeah. She said that she wanted 10. They literally laughed and put the three on. I saw him every week and it was so incredible. Like I saw him every week. Um, him and my daughter, when they got together, they, they hugged like they haven't, they hadn't, like, they'd known each other for years um, and everything was cool. Then I went to my final court, court, um, court case. They gave me parents responsibility. They said that um, they authorised for him to change his name, which actually hasn't happened yet. Um, they gave me um, a shared care living order and yeah, everything seemed to be working well. Well done, well done on that. Just for that happening at that stage. Yeah. So you said it was happening well at that stage. What then did she send through into the... What did she try to throw in there now? Now cause more problems. Basically, after we've had the, the court order, mm. like the court order, they, they took everything into consideration. Like, I mean, it was... Like, they asked me, because obviously I've got my, my daughter, the main care. She's like, well, she, she goes to school in Peckham. I live in South London. He goes to school in North... How am I going to get from North to East? They asked me all these questions mm. and I, I put it through clearly um, and they were actually they were actually impressed with the way that I got it. So I meant to pick him up from school and take him to school. Um, and I meant to, it, when um, during the holidays, she's meant to drop him to my parents' house and pick him up from my parents' house. That way we don't actually, it limits the communication between us. Mm. Um, it was working perfectly fine, except she wouldn't take him to my parents' house. So she's always asking me to meet her somewhere. So eventually, sometimes I'd meet her somewhere. Then I'm like, well, actually, I can't do that. This is why I said in court that I couldn't, mm. with my child, like, why am I going to come all the way to go to, for example, she wants me to do it in London Bridge. Why am I going to go to London Bridge, which is the same bus three stops later that comes to pretty much my house. Mm. Um, so the court said, if we can't agree, drop at my parents' house. And that was, she wasn't complying with anything. So eventually I took her back to court to get an enforcement order. And... Um, uh, was school we end up um, having a discussion and we agreed outside of court um, rather than having an enforcement order she said that she would um, comply more she wants to drop him at, to my house rather than my parents house um, and yeah but then after that I haven't seen him since August of last year Whoa. Uh, <laughs> just before we get to that part did you represent yourself in court or did you have someone to represent you no I represented myself in court and you got all that yeah because what most people don't realise is that um Okay, so this is specifically to the men and to the fathers out there. A lot of men, they go to court and they don't ask for what they want. They just say like, I want more time with my child. I want a regular um, routine with my child. Well, if you're seeing someone every week, that's regular, right? Mm. If you're seeing someone every month, again, that's even regular. Mm. Let's say if you see someone once a year, that's still regular. If it's once a year after five years, it's still regular. So you actually have to ask. So we're talking about birthdays. How often do you want to see birthdays and holidays? How often do you want to, um, like overnight contacts? How is it going to work? You've got to put these in place. So I literally was telling them that I require, um, I require a certain amount of time. So I require overnight contact so I can establish a relationship that, in certain things. A lot of men as well, 
don't take into consideration their life. Like, I mean, are you working? You work, like, if you work from nine to five, how are you going to pick up your child and take your child to school and these things there? You've got to put that in place. Um, so on holidays, are you going to have them for half the holiday? Once you put all this in place and tell the court what you, what you require, then it's now just a negotiation of how it actually happens. And one thing that I want to express is that you can't want anything. Everybody wants something. Yeah. So I want it. I, I, I want KFC, but I require food. I want to drink, but I require liquid. So what I'm saying is what a father requires is different from what you want. So I want overnight contact is different from um, I, my son's father, require overnight contact to establish a relationship. So what I would say to you, if when you're making your court cases and you're going through the system, you don't want anything, it's what you require. And let's take yourself away from saying the parent. You want to take yourself and say you're the father and the mother because the parent is the pair that rent. Mm. But we'll get into it. That's in a whole other situation. <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. <laughs> so um, I, I do like what you're saying there. It's, it's a more about being pacific what yes. you're asking for. Yes. Know what you're asking know for. Know what you're asking for in terms of days, in terms of how long, in terms of handovers, in terms of holidays, in terms of... Because the thing is, this, what you want is what they want. So it's it's the birthday. Who's going to have the birthday? Is it going to be split in half? Are you mm. going to have the morning half, the afternoon half? Or you gonna, if not, if you don't put this in place, the system will. And the reason why the system will is personally, the system is geared towards women. And the thing is, most people think that it's a bias thing. And it actually is a bit biased. But the reason why is because as a woman, naturally, unless a man says that I'm taking active role, mm. automatically a woman takes the role. Because she gives birth, so naturally she's going to be breastfeeding, so she's going to be doing certain things. Well, actually, as a man, you turn and say, hi, I'm here, I am I can do this as well. And like, oh, oh, okay, you know what? So you can have him for three or four days, she can have him for three or four days. How are you going to hand over? Um, if you don't say you're going to hand over, they will make it convenient for the mother because as a man, you always find a way to do things. But you actually have to suggest, well, actually, here's a halfway point. We can meet and um, blah, blah, blah. Well, what about the complications? You don't talk to each other. There's too much issues. Well, if I pick him up from school and hand, take him to school, I don't need to talk to him. Mm. And these are the things that as a man, you need to put in place unless it's not really going to go what you all right, want. So how was you able to find this all out when you was doing it? How was you able to, edu- were you researching this yourself? I'm, I basically, um, yeah, like um, I, I do a lot into the system. When I say I do a lot into the system, it's like I look at a lot of things and I realise I take words literally. So I look at the word and I look at the origination of the word and where it comes from and try to put it back into place. So when I see that, um, um, what's it called um, a parent, a parent, we are the legal guardians. It says it in our papers and everything. But actually, you can't deny the rights of a father. You can't deny the rights of a mother. Mm. And so it's just basically... I think is I ask God for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and God always provides answers without realizing. All right, so you took her, um, so you took her back to court for the second time to do what yeah. you asked to do, and then when you done that, you've now said that you done it. It was working for a bit, and then now you haven't seen your son from last yeah. year. Yeah. So when we went to court for the first time after I was granted my order, things were working perfectly. Well, not perfectly fine. I mean, there was resistance, but I actually mm. was seeing him. He was staying overnight and um, him, my daughter, I basically, I bought a bunk bed, wardrobe. Um, even my counsel um, actually put me and my daughter, my two kids on the front cover and said, um, gave me single father of the year in my estate. Um, well thank you. So it was like, things were working. However, cause she, it was like, cause she wasn't bringing him down. And certain times when I would go take him to school, um, there was like her, his mother works at the, sorry, his grandmother works at the school. So there was a lot of resistance. So sometimes I would change, I would say I'm picking him up from off a school club. Then the grandmother would take him out of school or, um, tell them that I'm not, I'm not due to pick him up and things like that. So I took it back to court. Once I'd taken it back to court, after we discussed and she said that she just doesn't like the way that I talk sometimes and how just, just various things that she was agreeing. Cool. We decided to have an agreement, but then after the agreement, we came, we came from court and then I can't see him. And what actually happened with that one was, um, he was due to come back to me the week after court. She contacted me and said that it's her birthday coming up. She wants to have him for her birthday. I said, yeah, 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 sure. She said, um, but she's going out on the weekend. Can she have him on the weekend? I said, yeah, 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 sure. I said, um, but then he's, st- he's starting back school next week. So can, um, she wants to take him back to school for the first time. So in my mind, I'm thinking, so you, for the last week of half ter- for the last week of the holidays, I'm not going to be able to see him. So you know what? You have him this period. I'll have him in the period after. Yeah. And she's like, um, so she's like, cool. 
on the Monday, the school starts calling me. Like, I'm meant to pick him up. I'm at work these times because she says she she's going to see him. So I'm at work. I'm thinking, rah. So um, I, I, I missed a call. I text her, say, I'm not sure why the school's calling me. She, then her grandma, uh, his grandma, her mum calls me, texts me, says, you're meant to pick him up from school. He's not picked up from school, blah, blah, blah. I was like, it's cool, whatever. I left it. I didn't even respond. Mm. Three weeks later on my period when I'm going to go and collect him, I'm now calling the school. The school tell me, oh, I'm not allowed to pick him up because it's their period. I said, how do you know mm. whose period it is? But why am I not allowed to pick him up? I contact them. They say, oh, your dad said that you're mad. I can't see him. I said, huh? Mm. I can't see him. Cool. I'm like, that doesn't even make no sense. Um, so I, I called, I called the school. They just said, no, I'm not allowed to see him. They just won't let me see him. They just won't let me pick him up. So I leave it for a couple of, I leave it for a couple of weeks and then try to go back on my next period. The school turns around and tells me, um, please just contact her because they don't really want to get involved and then I can't see him. I said, I do have parental responsibility. I think you know that. And they said, yeah, but um, as far as we're aware, that it's her period. They said, when it's your period, you will be bringing him into school. They said, yeah, I will bring him into school and I'm letting you know that I'm coming to collect him. Cool. Anyway, I thought, you know what? Whatever, I just kind of got irritated again. I just, my mind just shut down. Like, people don't understand. So, I'm, we're just talking about the story, but all of the things that, all of the, like... Um, the emotions? The emotions and the behind the scenes. That, as they say, the BTS. Like, it's like, like the court asked me, I have to provide a bunk bed. So, I had to turn around and start working extra hours to turn around and provide a bunk bed. I turn around and get a wardrobe. His birthday's in on the 29th of May. It crossed over to the period. I wanted to make him actually have a birthday. I, he said he had to share a party. I threw him a costume party, um, a superhero costume party. He invited all his friends. That cost money. My daughter's birthday is July, so I threw her birthday in July as well. And then buying all this stuff. So, all these things that people don't realise that actually go into it. And then, actually, because I've now suddenly got to two kids i have to buy a uniform so uniform is not expensive i'm buying a jumper the t-shirt the shoes when i've got all this stuff i didn't i'm not seeing him i had I didn't see him i got him the wrong size so on the first day of him going to school i asked her to um send you the size said no i asked her to send the size she didn't send the size so i said okay can i um can you bring him um, i want to pick him up can you have his uniform ready I said no i'm not going to provide it for you mm. i said you know what i turned on the email to school said i haven't got the uniform taking him into school now um his grandma meets me at the gate takes him from me goes takes him to let to get him changed then he now comes late to lesson now the school mark it off as that i'm late that i'm bringing him late for school i'm like all of this stuff that's actually going on so in the end when she's now saying that um the school's telling me they don't want to get involved and blah 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 again i'm like you know what forget it i just shut down i don't really see him for the next month or two and i just basically go to bang out work even more i'm thinking christmas is coming up i work in security as a supervisor so if i bang out this time now i can actually get um, a lot of period a lot of money so i'm working it out now because i'm trying to move property because i'm living in a one bedroom house with my two kids mm. and i've just basically bought um, a new chest of drawers and wardrobe so i've got an extra compartment for him mm. um so i just thought close and i started working now there was a, a point when you said about the enforcement um in mm. court now if you had this enforcement in place would she be able to do what she was doing now if you put that thing in place at that time when you was see, able to yeah see the thing is now i actually this is where the misconception is cause i actually believe that she would because this is the problem the courts are not actually seeming to take take this seriously because i've i've gone back to court when i actually took her back to court for the enforcement order she put a variation application in when she put a variation application they said it's a cross application so they're going to run it both together they weren't even now acknowledging the breaches they were just acknowledging if it's actually worth a variate they turned around and done another kafka report and wanted to get kafka section 7 report mm. so they got a section 7 report the kafka report turned around and said that actually Actually, they recommend my son should be with me for two weeks as opposed to the courts one week in free. So they've now done that. However, nothing actually is making a difference. So if I had got the enforcement order in place, then I feel like the police would have been able to do certain things. But that's what you would think. However, in after now time has gone past and I haven't seen him, after Christmas, I didn't even get to see him at Christmas. So I turned around and I contacted the police and told them I've got an enforcement order and she's basically breached the enforcement order. So I need her to be arrested. They basically said they can't do nothing. Yeah, I said I don't understand how they can't do nothing because on the on my actual on my order, I've actually got a special warning anyway. Even though it's not an enforcement order, I've got a special warning telling them that it can actually be turned into an enforcement order. 
They didn't do nothing. So in the new year now, um, after Christmas has gone past and I haven't seen him, I'm thinking, this is six, six coming up six months, I haven't seen my son after seeing him for a whole year and his skin and his health actually improved during the summer when he was with me for three weeks. So, okay, now I'm going to um, go down to her house. So I went down to went down to her house thinking, okay, you know what, it's not going to be a madness because whatnot. Basically, after school time, um, knocked on the door, I'll go away, your dad said you're mad. I said I'm mad yeah you have mental health issues um, I have mental health issues what are you talking about yeah contact social services social services have got mental health issues cool I called the police the police came down now I told the police I have an enforcement order just so I can get them there in the first place when the police have come they've literally bypassed me ignored me and my daughter and gone straight into her house had a conversation with her and then come out to me and tell me that I unfortunately can't do anything. I've just got to take her back to court. I said, but you clearly see the days and everything. And they said, no, oh, because it's a Thursday, we can't work out whose date it is and blah, blah, blah. So I have to take her back to court and then the court can give her a fine or impose something. So I'm like, whatever. And then I leave now. Then I get turned up get, get at home. And then a day later, I get, an, I get a court order from her. So she's now put a court order in now against me saying that she's refused to let me see my son since... Um, August last year because I have mental health issues so where does she get this from that you've got mental health issues where does she get this from she said a conversation that she had with my dad when my dad said that um, basically them lot, are, them lot are stressing me out okay so I'm like so based off a fabrication of, of something you've concocted in your head you've now turned around and called up a court order that I've gone to court the court have turned around and said okay they're going to suspend my current order until I actually get um, um, something from my doctor to confirm that I don't have mental health issues which I've now got which my doctor's turned around and says they have no concerns about my mental health but my my concern is how can just the allegation now allow me to uh, the court i've gone to court instead of actually them now turning around and telling her that she's actually breaching the order and actually she has to comply with it they've now encouraged her her breach all right let me just put that on pause yeah i want to put that on ice for a bit you keep on mentioning your daughter mm -hmm. do you have custody of your daughter full custody I'm the main, um, no, no, me and my daughter's mum, we've just out, out of agreement, but I'm the main care guardian for my daughter. So I'm in receipt of her child benefits. Um, uh, what's called her doctor's at mine. Um, okay. I was called her school's, re she's registered to the school nearest to mine. But we and, me and her mum co-parent effectively. So she's with me for usually about two weeks, then her mum for a week and a half to two weeks and vice versa. So you lot, so you lot basically juggle it. It's kind yeah. of more 50 50 or 60 40. Yeah, I'll tell you. you. Yeah, yeah I'll tell you. You have a 60 percent more than yeah. my mum has on the 40. Yeah. Uh, but we juggle it because if I'm, let's say, if like if I need to work now for three weeks straight, yeah, or um, then it's fine. But then let's say, like, if it's, it's my week, I'm having my daughter, but my daughter's mum's got something to go to, she'll pick her up for the next day. Um, then I'll pick her back up the day after. Okay. We juggle it like that. It's cool. And. In terms of, the, does that mother have any more other kids or is it just your one she has? Yeah, she's got, um, she just recently gave birth um, last year. Congratulations to her. Okay. Um, and me and her, me and her partner are cool as well because mm. um, sometimes he will go and pick up my daughter from school and that's good. and things like that. That's good. That's good. That's good to hear. That's a healthy corporate. Yeah, this is how it's, know. it's how it's supposed to be. I mean, there's a relationship between you and your child as a father, relationship between mother and a child and relationship between mother, father and child and a relationship between mother and father. The only one that broke down was the mother and father. Mm. You're still building up a relationship between mother, father and child. And that relationship is anything that you want to, to establish. It can be a negative relationship or a positive relationship. But when you actually now have a partner into it, there's another relationship that comes involved because I have a relationship between my my daughter her mother um, her mother her mother's partner and myself because if i'm not if i'm not cool with him we can have a negative relationship which will actually mm. and this is what people don't take into consideration mm, it's true Very it's not true. about you it's not about you anymore once a child comes into it it's literally everything is what's in the child's best interest and a lot of times that is like swallowing your pride swallowing what you don't want like because your child needs it and the way that i see it is like my child, my daughter's mum can do certain things that I don't like and I'm not happy with. I can't say anything because my daughter's a part of me, but she's a part of her. So just like my arm is a part of myself, I can cut my arm off, but I can do what I want to do with my arm. Mm. 
and the same thing because my child is a part of me so as my as and this is what a lot of mothers don't seem to actually have the concept of and um that once you actually have a child even if you don't like what they're doing so let's say like i know certain people who will raise their child and leave their child in the living room all day long whilst they're whilst they're outside chatting to their friends if that's what they want to do with their child unfortunately that's what they want to do with their child it's not a good thing now you as the other parent can pick up their slack mm. hear that definitely hear that all right now i'm taking the other one back off ice now yeah okay so going back to her story you know baby mother number one now you've um the police is saying that they can't do nothing etc what then happened so then i've now basically um yeah i've gone i've tried to put an application for um court a put, put an application form now and again to enforce the order um but i've actually received the application as well mm. so she's also put one in just slightly before myself um so i'm like okay cool it'll be a cross application i've gone to court we're sitting in court i come into court now and there's a screen i'm behind us i was like what what's this and i asked him what's this about they say she's she's um she's intimidated and has um fear of domestic violence and stuff i said i have no domestic violence like kafkas has literally i've had three i've had three kafkas reports that have said there are no safeguarding concerns um they said yeah but because a new not something new has happened i said what's happened new we went to court in august so so 31st of august was a court by september i can't see him so actually everything is still the exact same because no we need another Kafka's report to confirm that there are no more safeguarding concerns and we need to confirm from my doctor I said well I want something from her doctor as well because I have said that on from the beginning of my court case from the very first thing I've said that I believe she has mental health issues because how everything has actually transpired no one ever picked anything up no one ever done anything yet she can now make an allegation to a point where it suspended the order so they're like now no but we have to have this screen because of it's like, okay cool so I'm now sitting behind this screen feeling like so she's she, she's literally reversed it in court now yeah so she's now made you become the villain yeah so i'm in court now behind this blue screen talking to these three people now actually these three um and I, I i feel i feel like i'm being bombarded because i've got three women on the on the panel i've got a female legal clerk and i've got this female here and yet female energy yes now the thing is not one no um all i'm being told is that no one's taking into consideration that um i haven't seen my son since august last year no one's taking into consideration that actually the court their court already done a final court order final and i'm not sure if they actually understand what the word final means so um <laughs> i think it might be it was semi-finals <laughs> yeah so and and then what and now this always actually happened so what's actually concerning me is that in the in the crux of this no one's actually considering that i actually have two children and my daughter's being dramatically affected mm. so when i say dramatically affected um my school um in the reason why i went to my daughter my, my, after in january when i went to his ha- um, his house is because i've gone to the i've gone to my daughter's school to pick her up and her teachers told me that she's just been having like these crying fits out of nowhere and um when she's when she gets told off at work she just starts crying and she doesn't actually have tens- temper tantrums she went to speak to the counselor and the counsellor said she's just saying that there's a lot of emotional things going on right now. Mm. I said, is that what's her words? She said, yes, a lot of emotional things. For a child, that's quite deep to actually turn around and say. So when I actually looked at it, she said, yeah, she keeps talking about her brother and the fact that she bought, um, that you in, that her and daddy got rid of her princess bed to buy a bunk bed. But every time she goes home and looks down the bunk bed, he's never there. Mm. She's got an Xbox and daddy always says, oh, she can only play on the weekend when she's here, but she never comes. So she doesn't even ask to play the Xbox anymore. And I thought, oh my gosh. Is this what she's going through? And I thought, because I'm going through my own things and we fail to realise that actually our children go through it as well. And they can't express it and verbalise it like that. And the court are not even taking it into consideration at all. And I'm thinking, it's so unfair because I've, after firstly not knowing anything about, so I was denied the right to, have, to be at his birth. I was derived, denied the right to the pre, pre-bonding. After he was born, I've gone. I've done the family thing, yeah. But then, actually, because she doesn't have a relationship with me, and I'm not kind of giving it to her, she, I can't see him anymore. I've now gone to court, gone to mediation. She's refused it. I've finally taken it to court, got a court order in place. It's actually working to a point now. She actually stops it, and they suspend it. Like, how much do my daughter's only seven years old? How much must she be going through? Now I'm thinking about him. The thing is, I don't know how much he's going through and I can only imagine, but I know that my daughter's actually in the house so she's seen the changes that's actually taken place in the one-bedroom house. So to know not actually having a brother, to now actually having a brother and him now to not actually having a sister, to now having a sister, but he's being constantly fed this... 
there seems to be like where there's a lot of stop and starts. Yeah. So one minute you're involved, minute the minute you're not. You're involved and you're not, and it's becoming where it's 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 making it become a um a thing environment because the bonding now between yourself, the bonding with his brother, the sisters, it's all seems to be getting the relationships all mashing up. Yeah, all over now. After it literally, it was after. It's, it's how many years of gaps and then it actually repaired in the space of a year and I was so mm. I was so thankful to the most high because anyone who knocks on my socials that they can see they can see it's like it's just like evident. Um and then when they actually got together, people were like, Right, you've got a son. And then actually when they were so close, it's like, right, you would never know that they've been apart. Now, I've like to do all of this stuff and she and my daughter always says, Oh, I'm I'm saving this for him. When we got a new when we got a new chest of drawers, she literally I put all her stuff in and she goes remember this one's for this one's for him yeah don't put anything in there mm-hmm. so she put all of his toys in there so i'm thinking she's doing that but then this whole thing that's been smoothing together has now matched apart and then without actually realizing it another thing that we don't really kind of talk about is that he's learning like he's he's actually when i first met him he was very confident he wasn't actually very confident he was very shy and um, quite timid um he used to walk one one step at a time um he had certain skin rashes and then um, to a point where when i was telling her about the skin rashes she was arguing with me telling me he hasn't got no problems i took her back to his doctor the doctor gave us certain creams now i'm an international health coach so i i um, i teach people online about actually alkaline in the body so i started talking all those principles that i use with my daughter within the space of um in the summer holidays the court gets said gave the order that he has is split into two so i have three weeks with him and she has three weeks he was with me for two weeks i had videos i actually had to record it because i documented his skin cleaned up so quick because i gave him more water more fruits and vegetables he started becoming more confident he was he's on he's running around so much i was thinking is this the same is this the same boy and i'm thinking he's just actually been able to fluctuate so much so and then literally stop all right so going back to that court case what was the end verdict when you went to court, she went to court? To be honest, we're still currently, um, I'm still awaiting. And the thing is, what's weird is the court suspended the order until I have, um, until I get my doctor's records in. Got my doctor's records. But funny enough, I haven't got a copy of the court order yet. So this was actually over about a month, maybe two months ago. And you know, they meant to tell you you're, when you're back next at court and what's going to happen. I haven't got any of that yet. And I'm thinking to myself, the whole order, everything just seems funny. The fact that they suspended the order but it's a final order. And I would actually, I have to express that, that, that these were three magistrates rather than one judge uh, or two judge, two judges on the board. So they've now suspended the order that's actually been made. That's actually, and on, and I, I want to highlight as well, because on my first court case, the court actually said, the court see it is in my son's best interest that he establish a bond between his paternal family and his wider family as it's and this is what it says on it so for the court now to suspend it it's literally going against what they've actually said but i don't know when i'm technically back at court next because they haven't sent me the they sent me anything so is, uh, is, does she have to have a record what needs to be sent on her mental health as well yeah we both we both have our, our, our waiting pending those things but at the moment I haven't received anything, so I'm gonna eventually email the court and say I haven't. I don't know when we're meant to make our submissions. I don't know when we're actually meant to be back at court, um, because all I want to do is just actually have a relationship with my son, mm. and all my daughter wants is a one with her brother. And I don't understand why things are so so difficult. Mm. And I think the majority of times the reason why things are difficult between men building up a relationship is because as a as a woman, what I said to her before is that you've been there for so long. And you've actually had that relationship with your child to now suddenly someone come in and actually have an input. It's very hard for you to deal with. Well, actually, you have to realize that that's not your choice. Mm. It's actually that's what the child needs. And on top of that, if you actually haven't had an input, sometimes it's because of what you've done that you didn't actually allow that input to actually come in. Mm. Well, you now have to take a step back and just leave it. So if you don't like and things like this, like I like um, I don't know how to play, Mm. but um, my auntie's got a salon. However, when my auntie's not around, I will go and get my daughter's hair done with someone else. However, I know a lot of women find it very offensive for a man to get their child's hair done with someone else. And I just say to women, well, actually, look at me. When they see me with my daughter and they say, oh, it's so beautiful. World Book Day, I made her be Cleopatra. My mum wasn't available. She's broken her thumb. My auntie's up in Birmingham. So I've now got to get a girl. But actually, as the child's mother... Because my daughter's mama doesn't have that has that problem, I've never had that issue. But I hear my other friends have that issue. So I'm like, but what do you expect me to do? What happens is a guy just thinks, you know what? 
I'm not even going to take my child. And he won't tell you that he's not going to take his child. He knows that you're going to get antsy that he's going to get her hair done. And if you haven't done her hair and he wants to take him to a party, sometimes they will send her down or send the child down, not done up for a party. So a man doesn't know what to do. And these are things that people need to realize that it's not your decision of what you do with the child when you give it to the other partner. You just have to trust that if your partner wants a relationship with the child, they're going to do what they think is in their best interest for the child, whether you like it or not. All right. So as you're the main carer for your daughter, Mm -hmm. uh, how do you find to juggle that as being a a, a father? I find that extremely difficult, Mm -hmm. but very rewarding. And when I say difficult, it's because every day I do this like the thing is a lot of people they have they have a support network and when I say that I mean like so you the people that will take their child on the weekends but it's only the weekends but during the week you've got a school run and then I know a lot of men some men who do the school run but when they come home the wife's cooking or you got the, or they're going to give it to the partner but me I'll pick up my daughter from school um, and then I'll come home and then I'll do the homework and then I'll make, I'll make dinner and I have to get the uniform ready again for the next day. And then in the morning I'll do the, I'll do, I'll get her ready for, I'll get her, get her ready. Um, have give her a bath, give her a breakfast. Um, certain times she's got after school activities. So after school, I'll end up taking her to school. Um, and then actually you have to go to work. So a lot of times I will take my daughter to breakfast club, then go to, uh, go to work, do a shift. Sometimes, um, if I'm lucky, my mum my mom will be able to pick her up. When I had my ex-partner, sometimes my ex-partner would be able to pick her up, look after her, I'll finish work, come back, finish her off. And these are the things that you, you, you juggle it. But as a man, you have to realise if you want to be an active, per, um, active parent in your child's life, you've got to realise that you're going to actually have to make a lot of sacrifices and take a lot of steps back. And a lot of men are not really willing to do that. And a lot of men actually have a female counterpart whether it just be they go to their mums a lot of my friends they say all the time I'm going to mums to cook going to mums to get something to eat bruv I I have to it's it's Easter on Sunday I'm there working out um, lamb when we're going to cook lamb we're going to cook lamb stew lamb because she's at her mum's house at the moment so she's coming back tomorrow Mm. we're going to cook lamb stew lamb thingy is she going to eat then her uh, clothes we're men so a lot of women's clothes look different Actually, I don't dress her in skirts and um, skirts and um, dungarees. It's very hard to. I'm thankful when people buy these things for me or or when these things. And when I, I, I ask, just go out there. I have three sisters, but I don't have a support network. And people don't understand because actually I was close with my two sisters when I was younger. We didn't fall out. But I just don't have that option. So it's very hard. Is there anything you want to cover before I finish? I think um, what I would say is that I think as a man... A lot of men want want to have an active role in their children's life. And a lot of men will do so much more. But it's the system that really hinders them. And a lot of women, they play victim. When I say they play victim, a lot of women, they will manipulate a man by, if I can't be with you, then you ain't having a child. You ain't having you ain't having a child. And a lot of women will, be, will play in a sense that, well, actually, if you're not funding the child, you can't have a relationship with the child. And we they don't realise that actually... It's a woman has so much to go through. She her body changes shape, so she feels. You understand? She feels the change. I'm so close to my daughter, and people are like I, I wish my my baby father was like you. Well, I'll tell you this about my daughter. Most people don't realize it took about seven eight months before it clicked that actually that she was mine. Even though I came out to her being born, even though she was born in her sack, because what clicked was when I went to buy another set of baby grows, and I realized she still got baby grows here. And I'm not giving them a, as a way to no one as a present. They're still here. Now I look at my house, I've got bare clothes. Yeah. And that's what I want people to realise that. Let men be a father just by taking a step back and seeing what he does. Mm. No, I agree, I agree, I agree. Well said. Um, so is there anything you'd like to say to fathers out there who's listened to your story today um, in terms of all the craziness that you've been through and where you're maybe kind of still at now? what i would say is fathers don't don't give up in it like the thing is when it comes down to your children when it comes down to our kids it's not their fault that's the only reason why i keep fighting like when you ask me there's been times when i stopped because at times i just give up i just don't want to anymore i'm like i can't it's too much mental anguish and um, i'm like why i've got my daughter here who i love and adore and she loves me and adores me yeah i've got to go and fight for this but actually it's not his fault it's not his fault and you may not even, to some extent, and it's harsh to say, but sometimes as a father, you may not like the other child because of the family that they come from. Mm. It's not their fault. They're being 
produced from another family and they're putting things into it you've got to keep fighting because once you actually get there and if you if you do give up if you do give up the honest thing i would say is every now and then just write a letter a random letter my friend told me just write something and say listen i was thinking about you today blah 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 and put it down in a box because what happens is a couple years later when your son or your daughter comes for you and they ask you and they're cussing you and saying right you wasn't there what did you do you can say all the things that you did but you can show them these are the letters of how i actually felt and what i tried to do okay okay uh listen i'm gonna say thank you for coming down today bro and telling your story um I will wish you good luck in your next case Thank when you, you do find out the date on that as well. Um, to the viewers this evening, or to the viewers, um, I want to hear your lot's views in the comments below. I want to hear your lot's thoughts today on today's show. Um, also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like and share as well. Also, don't forget to check out the Baby Father's website as well if you are having difficulties of getting access to see your child. I know there is some information on there and we do keep on updating new information when we do get new information in as well. So just also keep a lookout and keep on trying on there. And don't forget to check out the merch as well. Um, we've got different t-shirts up there. I don't. I have it today underneath this, but I'm a bit cold. Yeah, <laughs> so um, yeah. So just do check that out. That's at thebabyfathers.com. Check out all that information, all right? Each and every Thursdays, have your say on the Baby Fathers platform. Every Thursdays, 8 p.m. live on YouTube. Make sure you check that out, all right? Forgot to tell you like that. So listen up. Um, for So for myself, DJ Riddler, and from... Spyro Phoenix. All right, listen. I want you lot to have a, um, a good Easter. And till next time from the Baby Fathers. Peace. See you later. And we out.